OK, we're going to try and use some of the stuff we've done from chapter four. We're going to try and blend this with some new differentiation stuff to help us be better at sketching graphs. And people find this really difficult. And remember, if you have a graphics calculator, you can always type this into your calculator to see what it might look like as well. Um, and don't worry, if you can't get these completely right, it's just about trying some of these techniques. It's to try and deepen your understanding. So it says in chapter four, we used features such as intercepts with the axes and behavior when X became large or X became very small in order to sketch graphs. Now we can also find stationary or turning points. Do you remember mentioning this when we were doing the graphs back in chapter four? I think you might have done. So this one says, by first finding the stationary points, sketch the graph of y equals 1 over x plus 27x cubed. Well, this is a weird graph. I don't think that has any standard way of looking. This bit looks like a reciprocal. This bit looks like a cubic. But hang on a second. We're adding them. So I'm not sure how this is all going to be. But it does say, first of all, find the stationary points. So y is equal to 1 over x, which is x to the minus 1, plus 27x cubed. So I'm going to differentiate this. I'm going to bring that one down and I'm going to reduce the power by one. I'm going to do 27 times three, which is 81. And I'm going to reduce that power by one like this. So because it's stationary, I can make this equal zero. So that's minus x minus squared plus 81 x squared. Well, let's put this onto the other side. So I get putting the minus x to the minus two. That's actually one over x squared equals 81 x squared. I'm going to multiply by the x squared here, so I get x to the 4. I'm going to divide by the 81, so I get like this. And then I'm going to do the fourth root of 1 over 81 to get to x. So I can do that on the calculator. I think I can. Here it is. The fourth root of 1 over 81, which is a third. Did I do that bit right? 60, 70, 81. Yeah, that's great. So we get a third. Now, you can actually have plus or minus a third here, because if you do minus a third, and you raise it to the power of 4, you do get 1 over 81. So I'm going to keep going down the page. When x is equal to a third, let's find out what y is. So I'm going to put that into the equation here. So I'm going to do 1 over a third. That's going to be my answer. And I'm going to do the graph is 1 over the answer plus 27 answer cubed. 1 over the answer plus 27 answer cubed. You get 4. Now, I'm going to replace that answer now with the other one, which is when x is equal to minus a third. So I'm just going to go back through and type that in really carefully. So I'm going to type in, whoops. I'm just going to start it again. So minus a third, that's my answer. And I'm going to do 1 divided by the answer. But it's a fraction, so you can see what I'm doing plus 27 answer cubed, and you get minus 4. So we've got these two stationary points now. We've got a third 4, and we've got minus a third minus 4. So these are our two stationary points. I think what I'm going to try and do is find out the nature of these stationary points. So I'm going to do the second derivative. I'm going to take this thing here, and I'm going to differentiate it. So I've got the minus times minus 2. Well, it's going to be plus 2, and it's going to reduce from minus 2 to minus 3. 81 times by the 2 is 162x. So when x is equal to a third, the second derivative, let's see what it's going to be equal to. I'm going to do a third. Store that as my answer. So I'm going to do 2 answer to the power of minus 3 plus 162 of the answer. And we get 108, which is greater than 0. So if it's greater than 0, every way you're looking is going up. So it means it's a minimum. Did I type that in right? Yeah, x is equal to a third. Perfect. 
Okay, so that means it is a minimum when x is equal to a third. So we have a third, and I think the y coordinate was four. And then the other one is going to be when x is equal to minus a third. So let's find out the second derivative. I'm going to type that into my calculator. So same thing as before, I'll type in minus a third, I'll store that as the answer. And then it's going to do two answer to the minus three plus 162 answer. And you get minus 108. So that means every way you're looking is negative. In other words, it is a maximum point. So we get this is a maximum. So this one was a minimum. This one here is a maximum. I'm going to start sketching this graph, see if we can get an idea about what might be happening. So we've got a minimum point at a third four. So this is a third, this is four. And I'm going to do a little bit here to remind me it's a minimum. And I've got a minus a third and a minus four. I've got a maximum point. So it's going to be like this kind of shape. Now, we just need to think about how this graph is going to behave for some different values here. So I'm interested to know what happens when x becomes like a big value over here. So what about if x is one of these big values up here? So let's just try and put in a big value. I'm just going to remind myself what this graph is. So it's 1 over x plus 27x cubed. So my graph is 1 over x plus 27x cubed. So if is x is going to become a big number, let's just try something like x equals 100 and see what kind of answer we get. So if x is 100, I'll just put in 100 there. I'll do 1 divided by the answer plus 27 answer cubed. And wow, you get a very, very big number. So if x goes to a big number, y goes to a big number. That means that the graph is going to go like this. It's going to shoot up. And then I'm going to try, what happens if x becomes a very negative number? Well, I don't know, I could try that x is minus 100. You're probably going to have an idea of what happens here. If I just go back and delete all this, so I'm going to say that x is minus 100. I'm going to do 1 divided by the answer plus 27 answer cubed. Have a prediction about what you think that will be. It is going to be y becomes a very negative number. So that means it's going to come all the way down here. Well, we knew that this one was a minimum, which means it's going to have to go up. It's going to have to come up like this. And we knew that this one was a maximum, so it's going to have to come like this. That is one last thing that I want to think about for this graph. Are there any values? Are there any illegal x values for this expression? Well, yes, you can't put in x equals zero. This is going to be an asymptote. So this asymptote is this bit down here. You're never going to be able to get the graph close to that bit. So that is why this does not cross the axis. This black line here is not going to cross the axis. Now, this is really difficult. We did loads of things here. Let's just remind ourselves what we did. We differentiated it, made it equal zero, and we solved that to find out the x coordinates. We found out the y coordinates as well to come up with these two bits here. I then used the second derivative to find out what these coordinates were. Were they minimums? Were they maximums? Once they were minimums and maximums, I started drawing them, knowing that there would be this kind of shape here and this kind of shape here. And then I thought to myself, well, if x becomes a big value, in other words, down here, y becomes very positive. And if x becomes a negative value, y also became very negative. So I knew it was going to be coming down like that as well. And then I thought, were there some illegal x values? Well, yes, x was, wasn't allowed to be zero here which meant there's going to be this asymptote along the y-axis. And so we get this kind of shape here and here. Now, graph sketching is so hard. It's often asked in lots of Oxford and Cambridge interviews as well. So I'm not expecting you to be pros at this. What I'm expecting for you to do is to try and find the stationary points, work out if they're minimum or maximum, and then have a go at sketching them. But you've all got access to this Desmos app, or it's a website as well. So you can then check your answer and see how it goes. So I'm going to check it as well. 
I've got 1 over x plus 27x cubed. So I'm going to do 1 over x plus 27x cubed. Oh dear, I didn't write that right, did I? 27x cubed. Okay, so it's not perfectly how I've drawn it, but I guess it's sort of similar to it, right? We've got this minimum point here at a third four, and this maximum point at minus a third four. We've got this asymptote of the y-axis. You can see how it's never going to touch that y-axis. It looks like it does, but when you zoom in, it doesn't. And so I think we've done pretty good at sketching this graph. So definitely use Desmos when they're asking you to sketch it to see if you've got them right. Okay, so now what you can do is have a go at doing exercise 12i. There's a lot, a lot going on in exercise 12i.